You got a heavy duty setup, you want to make it run better. Power caps are the answer. We're going to install some power caps. Power capacitors. What do they do? When do you need them? And why? We're going to talk about that and a whole lot more. And we're going to install a power cap pack onto a Max series speed control. This applies to pretty much any speed control in the line of power capacitors on a speed control are always a good thing. When do you want them? Why do you want them? Always and why? Because it's better. <laughs> Those are silly answers, I know. But a power capacitor is there to help a phenomenon that normally damages the speed control. It's called ripple current. That ripple current uh, makes the MOSFETs inside the speed control, and MOSFETs are the pieces that make the, the motor go, overheat. The power capacitor catches that ripple current and then reuses it when the MOSFETs switch back on. I have some more detailed explanations of power capacitors that are very boring, but in the end, it's a little different than what most people assume capacitors are for. It's not so much just voltage equalization. In this situation, they're specifically for ripple current. And a lot of times I see folks that take the power capacitor sets and they put them on their battery plugs. You know, well, it's still installed. Obviously, it's going to do something. It's not going to work correctly. Power capacitors on the speed controls are right on the power board immediately next to where the power wires go because that is when power capacitors are the most effective at protecting the speed control. So when you add a power capacitor pack, you want to put it as close to the actual power connection as you can. On a speed control like these that are, you know, if you've ever opened up a Max Series, they're sealed up inside. You can't get down to the power board very easily. So for these types of installations where you can't get to the circuit board, you actually install it right on the power wire itself. So it can be a little bit tricky, so we're going to walk you through how to do all that. With a speed control that has normal solder posts, this is a Max, or this is an XR8 Pro that applies to the XR8 Plus or the XR8 SCT as well, you would want to put the power capacitor directly on your actual battery posts, either on top of your power wires or on the post first. So let's get to it. So first things first, how do I get into the wire? And one of the things I like to use, this seems silly, is a dull X-Acto knife because it'll break the insulation and not the wire. And that's kind of important because you don't want to cut the strands of wire inside. So if you do have your, your favorite cutting tool of choice, mine is my super dull and barely a knife knife so what I'm gonna do is try to just break the edge very carefully rolling on there staying away from the case and I'm gonna move up just a small amount and do that same little move again and then this is when a, a little bit sharper works because you're going with the strand so you're not gonna cut them you just add a little slice there and a little slice there and then if you're lucky <laughs> you should be able to just get the insulation right out of there with a, you know, a little bit sharper knife would have been good. I'm going to do that again. Push on it a bit. And be careful not to chop the cap that's right there like I almost did. We still see this? All right. And then you get the insulation up and off of there. And you don't need to get a whole ton because you're just putting a small wire on there. But you are going to need to get some solder down in there. So you do need to get some of this insulation off. This is super elegant. All right, so there, we got a little patch of exposed wire. It's not a lot, and we try to keep this side from getting any tears. And then if I did it right, I don't have, yeah, it's just like there's not extra slot going both directions because that'll tend to let the wire split further. All right, so insulating all of this is also very important. Shrink tubing is going to be better than electrical tape for most situations but if you have to use electrical tape it's better than using nothing that's what I always say so I'm just gonna add some solder onto here make sure it gets enough to flow a little bit like that and then shrink tubing we go on this side then we bring the I'm a, I like to do this so the wires come up into the air makes it a little bit easier I'm leaving and then I always tin the wire again just to make sure sometimes it makes it a little easier if you cut off the pre-tinned part and re-tin it with your same solder just because it makes all the solder the same that way not necessary but it does help if you're super wary of touching the cap here, you can take a sheet of decal, stick it in there. It gives you a little extra protection. I like that. 
something's better than nothing. Obviously, it's not a ton of protection, a business card, some cardboard. And then when I go to do this part, I go, bam. Ooh, I just melted the case a little bit. Be careful not to melt your case. And with a little bit of downward pressure from the iron to make sure that the power cap wire goes through the bubble of solder and onto the actual wire itself. Let's everything flow real nicely. And look at I got a signature edition case melt bonehead. And then I can slide this guy back down and hit my shrink wrap machine. All right, and then we will just very simply, he says with a smile, repeat that process on the other side. So again, I think this time we'll try it a little different. We'll do the slot this way. And then with the dull, very, very dull knife. And again, this is so I, I try not to cut the strands of the wire if I can help it. Get a little bit of pressure on there and I should be able to just flick that guy out of there. Bam. All right, so just making sure the wire gets that solder on there nicely. Don't forget the shrink tubing. And this time I'm not gonna melt the case of the speed control. Again, downward pressure, so the wire from the power cap goes through the solder onto the actual lead. Oh, my hand's blocking all that, sorry. And shrink tubing machine. So for this setup, because like I said, this is kind of going in an unknown vehicle, I will be mounting these power capacitors with a couple twists here, and I'm just going to probably zip tie, or maybe I'll get a real big piece of shrink tubing, and I'll be able to put that on there that way. What I'm going for here is that those wires don't get any stress on them, they can't be broken, and I can keep an eye on them, and they won't get damaged, you know, doing anything, because they'll be on the wires, so to speak. But that is the quick and dirty on how to install some power capacitors onto your Max Series speed controls. If you do have any questions, comments, or concerns about anything you've seen here, please shoot us an email, northamerica at hobbywing.com. Thanks for watching, everybody. We do have many other soldering videos that'll cover the basics of soldering, what solder we use, temperatures and all that. But the short answer, it's 6040 rosin core solder if you can find it. If you have to use lead free or the high silver solder, make sure you get some flux. I run a normal solder station. There's a sponge here to wipe the excess solder and dirt off of there. And I run a decent sized chisel tip for most of my big soldering stuff at around 750 to 850 degrees Fahrenheit. Or uh, soldering, I'm sorry, I know I always get a comment about the, the way that we pronounce solder over here, but we also pronounce aluminum correctly, so it goes both ways, folks. <laughs>